bersama saya untuk siaran langsung sidang media MH370. Baik, uh, ketika ini uh, seperti yang anda dapat saksikan, uh, Datuk Sri Syamudin Tun Hussein uh, bersama dengan... Uh, Bersama dengan Ketua Pengarah DCA dan juga CEO MAS telah pun berada di pentas utama. Jadi tanpa membuang masa kita terus sahaja dengarkan sidang media ini. Acting Minister of Transport, Datuk Azharuddin Abdul Rahman, Director General Department of Civil Aviation, Ahmad Johari Yahya, Chief Executive Officer Malaysian Airlines System. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, to start off the press conference this evening, I hereby call upon Dr. Sri Hishamuddin Tunusin, Acting Minister of Transport, to deliver his statement. Sir, if you please do the honour. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Before I begin today's briefing, I would like to reiterate what Australian Prime Minister Dr. Tony Abbott said this morning. The international cooperation underway in the search for MH370 is nothing short of tremendous. The militaries of Malaysia, Australia, the United States, New Zealand, China, Japan, and Korea are all working hand in glove to find the missing plane. I should also like to point out that Indonesia has given clearance for 94 sorties by aircraft from nine different countries to fly in their airspace as part of this search. As Prime Minister Abbott said, it is heartening to see so many different countries working together for a human humanitarian cause to resolve this extraordinary mystery and to bring closure for the families on those on board. This morning, the Prime Minister spoke with Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott. Prime Minister Abbott gave a full update on the status of the search operations headed out of Perth. Our Prime Minister has decided to travel to Perth on Wednesday for a working visit to Pierce Air Force Base to see the operations firsthand and also to thank the personnel involved in the multinational search effort, including the Malaysian personnel. This afternoon, the Australian High Commissioner to Malaysia briefed me on the creation of a new Joint Agency Coordination Centre, JACC, which will be based out of Pierce Air Force Base in Perth. The GACC will be headed by an Air Marshal retired Angus Houston, the former Chief of the Defence Force Australia. The GACC will coordinate operations between all Australian government agencies and international search teams. As per the information that we have received from the Australian authorities, the area of search today is 254,000 square kilometers. Today, nine military aircraft and one civilian aircraft travel to the search area. These planes are two Malaysian C-130s, one Chinese Eusian IL-76, one Japanese Coast Guard G-5, one Australian P-3 Orion, one New Zealand P-3 Orion, one New Zealand civilian aircraft, one American P-8 Poseidon, one Japanese P-3 Orion, and one Korean P-3 Orion. Today, 11 ships were also deployed to the search area, and there are eight Chinese ships, the Shuilong, the Kunlung San, the Haiko, the Chao Kang Tui, the Jing Kang San, the Hai Xin, the Dong Hai Ju, and the Nan Hai Ju. Three Australian ships, the HMAS Success, the HMAS 2 Womba, and a merchant vessel, Barclay Pearl, which is currently transiting in the search area. The Malaysian ship, the KD Liku, is expected to arrive in the search area on the 3rd of April. The ADV Ocean Shield, fitted with a towed pinger locator and a Bluefin 21 autonomous underwater vehicle is due to arrive in the search area on the 3rd of April. In terms of sightings of potential objects, on Saturday, five objects were retrieved by HMAS Success and the Haisun. However, it was found that none of these objects were related to MH370. 
On Sunday, an Australian P3 Orion made visual sighting of seven potential objects. A Korean P3 Orion also made visuals of three potential objects. The Chinese ship, the ice cream, was tasked on Monday to retrieve these potential objects. In my capacity as Malaysian Defence Minister, I will leave tonight for the United States Pacific Command in Hawaii. I will attend the ASEAN Defence Ministers' Meeting, which will be held from the 1st to the 3rd of April. The meeting is being convened by the US Defence Secretary, Secretary Chuck Hagel. On behalf of the Malaysian government, I will share with my ASEAN counterparts and the, governments of the, and the government of the United States the latest developments regarding the search of MH370. I will convey to our ASEAN neighbours and the United States Malaysia's utmost appreciation for their valuable, invaluable help in the multinational search effort. I will also use this opportunity to discuss the possibility of deploying more specific military assets in the event that we need to embark on a more complex phase of the operation. I shall be discussing with the United States and our other friends and allies how best we can acquire the assets needed for possible deep sea search and recovery. Today I held a meeting with the Indonesian Special Envoy and a Special Advisor to the Foreign Minister, Ibu Wewe Setiawati, and in her delegation uh, included His Excellency Mr. Herman Prayitno, the Ambassador of Indonesia to Malaysia. The Special Envoy expressed her heartfelt gratitude to the government of Malaysia and the multinational team conducting the search operation. And the Special Envoy also stated that Indonesia fully understands the complexity and the magnitude of the challenge ahead and reaffirms its unshakable support for Malaysia. Yesterday, a group of families whose loved ones were on board MH370 arrived in Kuala Lumpur from Beijing. The government is due to hold a high-level briefing soon for these families to update them on the latest developments regarding the search for MH370. The briefing will include international experts who are not available during the briefings in Beijing, including experts from China. It will also be broadcasted live to other families in Beijing. The search for MH370 continues to be a large, complex, multinational effort involving many countries and international agencies. Much of the research has been used to track MH370 has been provided to the Malaysian investigators by our international partners. This research is extremely complicated, involving teams of highly specialised experts, many of whom are based in different countries around the world. The briefing will provide an opportunity for the families to hear directly from some of these experts. The experts will be able to explain the research, the data and the method methodology that has informed the search operations. Ladies and gentlemen, we understand that it has been a difficult time for all the families. And we appreciate that many families want to see physical evidence before they will accept that MH370 ended in the South Indian Ocean. We find ourselves in a difficult position and I repeat the question that the families principally want answered is the question we simply do not have the answer to, namely where their loved ones are and where is MH370. On Saturday, I met with the Malaysian and Chinese families based in Kuala Lumpur. It was the most difficult meeting I have ever attended. The families are heartbroken. For many, the strain of the past few weeks have been unbearable. But the one message they delivered to me again and again is not to give up hope. And I promised the families that Malaysia, working with our international partners, will not give up hope. We will continue with all our efforts to find MH370. This is a promise that Malaysia intends to keep. We will continue searching and we will keep investigating and we will never give up until we find out what happened to MH370. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, the floor is now open for Q&A session. We will start with local media first. Please.
Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Saya Syimul daripada Tiga Anjwa. Datuk Sri, uh, sekali lagi saya ingin bertanya setelah 24 hari, uh, bila agaknya penjelasan mendalam daripada pihak teknikal terutama daripada BOI dan dijelaskan dalam sidang media ini. Dan soalan kedua saya, uh, apakah kemungkinan yang boleh disimpulkan setakat ini um, setelah semua objek yang dikesan setakat ini tiada kaitan dengan MHD ke 707 masa? Soalan kedua tu memang tadi dalam kenyataan saya saya dah mengesahkan mana yang kita dah dapat uh, kumpul dan jumpa dan uh, bawa kembali uh, ke pengkalan uh, tidak boleh dikaitkan dengan MH370 setakat ini. Tetapi uh, operasi untuk uh, mengesan uh, visuals uh, dan barangan yang melalui satelit uh, masih berterusan. Berhubung kait dengan uh, kepakaran saya dah nyatakan perangkat awal ini uh, oleh kerana ada keluarga daripada Beijing dan uh, satu briefing uh, taklimat akan diberikan kepada mereka yang kali ini akan melibatkan pakar-pakar uh, tertentu supaya permintaan mereka untuk mendapat maklumat tambahan uh, dapat di uh, dapat dipenuhi. Uh, ini saya tak tahu lagi sama ada uh, melibatkan Boeing tetapi pakar-pakar lain seperti daripada NTSB dan sebagainya sedang dibincangkan uh, dalam masa terdekat ini. Yes, yes. Um, Dato Sri, Hima from Capital TV. Uh, seems like uh, all the debris have found uh, not linking to MH370. Is there any time frame uh, for the search on the debris? Uh, I monitor uh, statements coming out of Perth very closely. Um, there is no uh, indication of a timeline as such. And uh, I feel to be fair to the, to the families and I've indicated that all systems go and there is no letting out at the moment. And as, you, as I announced, our Prime Minister is going to be in Perth on Wednesday. I think uh, it looks as though we're going to continue. Um, what happens later, um, we have discussed it. But I think, to be fair to the families, um, that is something that I would not want to share with the public at the moment, because our focus is still to find the, the uh, uh, airplane. Okay. For the gentleman, please. So you're going to just read your present from Mr. Wani. And though, uh, again, it's been, but it has been done by Air France 30 days after the crash uh, of Flight 407, and I'll be replicating them in our search operation. I'm talking about the battery life, per se. Uh, to Mr. AJ, as an employer, uh, what is your stand regarding investigation of, of your pilots? Shouldn't you stand by or defend your pilots? And uh, this is those by saying anyone is uh, innocent under proven guilty. Thank you, sir. Can you answer? Uh, let me answer in terms of pilot. Now, as far as we're concerned, it's our role as an organization to fully cooperate with the investigation. Okay? Um, we know our pilots and we know that you know they are qualified and they're experienced to fly the aircraft. Right? But uh, like I said, we are, we have to in, you know, fully cooperate with the investigating authorities. As yes. far as their records are concerned, I think we have announced well, their, you know, their background, their records, uh, is, is all that. Okay. Um, in respect of the French team, I mentioned earlier um, in previous press conferences that I have met with them. Um, especially uh, Mr. Jean-Paul Trudet, who was the head of the French investigation team, former director general of BEA, and they have been very, very cooperative. Uh, part of the, the um, reasons why we are using the uh, black box pinger locator uh, through PECOM and through the assistance from the US uh, in using the vessels from Australia uh, were inputs given by the French team. Uh, what happens after the 30 days uh, um, expires, 
Uh, it's also been discussed, and again, uh, I don't think this is the appropriate PC to reveal such information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's Marian from Benama. I have two questions. First will be for Dr. Sri, and the second one will be Amit Jari. Right, uh, first one. Uh, it has been more than a week since Prime Minister Najib announced that the flight path of MH370 has ended in the middle of the Indian Ocean. So, <clears throat> and yet, nothing has been found so far, and that has been confirmed. So, will this raise the possibility uh, respect the possibility of the plane being hijacked and still at large. Uh, the second question for a majority. <clears throat> what is your opinion or comment on the intention of the Chinese family members to take legal action with the Malaysia Airlines when nothing has been confirmed yet? Thank you. Thank you. The fact that uh, the possibility of a hijack, the IGPSC previously uh, said, there are four areas that they are focusing on, including hijacking, and that will continue. Um, as regards to um, whether uh, the objects uh, will be recovered and whether the announcement by the Prime Minister, as you know, the area of responsibility uh, is with Australia. And as you know, uh, the efforts being taken by the Australian authorities have been very commendable is uh, supported by seven nations just for that quadrant. Um, the Prime Minister, who is going to be travelling to Perth on Wednesday, will be briefed fully on how uh, things are going to be, uh, have been conducted and how it's going. I'll probably be discussing what are the plans ahead. Okay, as far as the second question about the lawsuit, I suppose, by the Chinese families, uh, Malaysia Airlines obviously uh, has not been notified, and we have to be we have to know what those suits are before we respond. On that side, <coughs> yes, thank you. Good afternoon, Dr. Sri. I have two questions. One question that excuse me, you're from are you from Saint Jude here? Yeah, you mentioned just now there will be a specific a briefing to the Chinese family the relative. I mean, meaning that how about the uh, I mean the relative from different country will we conduct another briefing or will we be a joint briefing? And and in the meantime there will be no specific briefing in Beijing. The second question is uh, the family members call for a press conference yesterday at Suba demanding apologies from Malaysia and your response thanks. I okay, will expand on the apology. Part of the uh, reasons for that request is uh, an allegation that the Prime Minister or the government has stated that the plane actually crashed uh, and that there were no survivors. That totally is er erroneous and I have, uh, uh, if I can quote what the Prime Minister actually said and it goes and he said on the 24th of March, uh, based on the analysis in MASAT and AAIB have concluded that MH370 flew along the Southern Corridor and its last position was in the middle of the Indian Ocean west of Perth. This is a remote location far from any possible landing sites. It is therefore with deep sadness and regret I must inform you that according to the new data, fight MH370 ended, ended in the southern Indian Ocean. There were no mention of a crash or survivors, or no survivors. On the, on the uh, briefing. Yeah, on the, Beijing. On the briefing, uh, the, see the, the, as uh, Dr. Sui Isham mentioned, uh, the government is setting up a high-level briefing uh, for the uh, NOKs uh, or the Chinese uh, uh, families here. Uh, I think it will be done soon. And uh, I think the plan is also to telecast this briefing live to uh, the families in Beijing. So we do not have to repeat it. <coughs> yep. Thank you. Another corner there, please. Thank you. Yeah, I need a little bit more. 
Soalan saya mengenai Edward Lee. Ada pakar yang mendakwa ketika pesawat itu melakukan kecepatan, dia dilakukan dengan sempurna. Soalan tidak ada berlaku situasi cemas dalam kerap. Mungkin ada rumus yang dibuat oleh Oscarnya sama dengan Edward Lee. Saya kalau ada pun saya belum terima uh, apa-apa maklumat berhubung kait dengan uh, uh, kenyataan tadi. Okay, last question from Malaysia. Yes, no question, please. Datuk Sri Sofi Ahmad dari Perdana Menteri. Sebelum ini Datuk Sri kata ada perbincangan dengan pihak China Southern Airlines untuk sama-sama mereka memikul tanggungjawab dan pesawat itu adalah Uh, kami sudah bincang dengan China Southern uh, Sebenarnya ini pesawat kami Itu pasal tanggungjawab lebih kepada kami uh, Mereka hanyalah kod share partner saja Jom hmm? setuju untuk bekerjasama dengan kita Untuk menolong the families hmm? Okay, now we open to international studio. Please, the corner. Yes. Jadi, nanti kita akan berbual itu. Kita kini let us know the status of your internal investigations. How far it has gone, including everything the crew and everyone else. Uh, and then, uh, secondly, is it possible for you to give us the location and route of the six handshakes? The internal investigation you were referring to is the police investigation. Um, like I said, uh, the one or two PCs uh, soon, the IGP should come out with that. I don't have any more information apart from the, what uh, I have indicated to the media in the last few days. As regards as to the uh, six handshakes, we actually distributed a diagram of where the, the handshakes were. Really. No, I think the handshakes, uh, I think that's, that's uh, the information that was given uh, by Masad. And that's, that's a very important criteria for the uh, analysis to be done by the, the investigators now with Boeing, NTSB, AIB. I think that's something that uh, we are unable to issue the segment now. Thank you. I stand corrected. Okay. Please, listen. Hi, uh, Shimon Brokovitz from CNN. Hi, How are you, sir. Hello. You. I'm fine, thank you. I wanted to see if you can clarify uh, some of the, in the handoff, uh, in some of the language uh, to the air traffic controller. There's been some different variations of what was said, and I wanted to see if there's a way you can maybe put some of that to rest by clarifying exactly what was said. Uh, and the second question is, when the plane was was flying, you, there was some, you had said that there was a, or someone had said there was a sharp left turn. Was there a sharp left turn or was there a loop around that the plane at all make a circle? There have been some diagrams that have been floating around that show the plane made a loop and turned. Um, so we're trying to see if we can clarify that. I think the details of the air traffic controlling uh, the aircraft or uh, give direction to the aircraft uh, that will be that will be looked uh, very carefully by investigators. I think that is another area that uh, the investors will look at, and will will that's will be part of the investigating uh, uh, you know uh, criteria and something that we just cannot reveal to you at the moment. Yeah, yeah the, even. This microphone is not working yet. You can use mine. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, the the manner of the the air traffic control at the mo uh, at 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 the time of the aircraft uh, air make an air turn back is one of the very important criteria for the investigators to look at. That is something that the investigators will look hard into it. Will 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 see what 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 actually was wrong with the aircraft. Uh, what are the what are the problems faced by both uh, the the controllers and the, if there's any. So I cannot reveal to you uh, what what is been 
what are the visitors are, are, are going to do that that's uh, we leave it to the investigators to to investigate so it Can I just give you an, an assurance, because I announced uh, earlier that an um, internal panel of inquiry by the Air Force is presently being done. I've also indicated that the Ministry of Transport uh, is convening an international uh, inquiry panel um, that will consist of all the experts uh, around the world. Um, in Parliament recently, we were debating either to have a Royal Commission or a parliamentary select committee uh, to discuss this matter. Now, all these inquiries are already in place, um, and the truth will prevail and will be out there. So, okay, so basically, if you, if you are asking for questions which is part and parcel of investigations, talking about transcripts, uh, you, you must be fair to us because only those who have who are doing the investigations can give us the okay. Now, if, if, if it comes a time when this can be shared with the public with their consent, by all means, I will declare it. But in any event, at the end of the day, I'm answerable to the Royal Commission or the Parliamentary Select Committee, to the International Inquiry Board. Um, so we, will, we are not hiding anything. We're just following the procedure uh, that is uh, being set. Well, like I said, let the inquiries show what uh, it shows. Okay, we move on. Yes, other back, please. The lady has put on the head, please. I have two questions. Oh, sorry, I'm yes. Stacey Brown, ABC News in New York. I have two questions. One is a follow up to the question that CNN just asked about the route of the airplane. You mentioned that you cannot discuss this now because the investigation is ongoing. But this information has been put out already in public documents, both in the Google Earth map of the way that the airplane went when the tracks were being, when the tracks were being determined, and in, in a briefing to the families in Beijing, a slide of which has been made public on Twitter. So the round of the airplane is not only known, it's already been revealed, but not to the press. My first question is, can you explain why you can tell this to the families and you can put it out in the search, but you will not discuss it with us? I'm not sure The second what, question, yeah. sorry, go ahead. No going with the second question. Oh, I'd much rather hear the answer to the first. I'm more interested to hear what your second question is. Okay. <laughs> My second question is regarding the release of the interviews with the pilot's wife, pilot Zakari's wife and daughter to the Daily Mail in the UK. Somewhere, apparently, the police have revealed the transcripts of those interviews, including the comportment of both of those women. Yeah. I'm curious to know if that was sanctioned by the investigation to release those documents, and if not, whether there's an investigation underway as to how mm -hmm. the Daily Mail received that, in, that investigative information. One, I can confirm that I don't think it came from the police. And how M M Daily Mail got that information, you have to ask Daily Mail. As regards to the issue of uh, information that's been revealed outside the press conference and of, or speculation uh, and diagrams in Google or in anything else in the internet, uh, I cannot confirm or uh, discount. Uh, I can only base on what I've informed you in my PCs. These were released by, these were released by you. These by me? I don't think. No, I, I will clarify that. I, I will not go into uh, a debate about it here. Like I said, we have our PCs every day, and if that is something that has been um, informed by us, I will clarify. It's no big deal. But the route of the airplane, you have released it in diagrams. You just don't the family uh, briefings were closed off. Next. Next, please. Okay, the gentleman behind us. Yes, please. Um, good afternoon. I'm James Chow from CCTV News. Um, I was uh, wanted to ask you, Minister, about the, uh, the the envoy that you spoke to me about an interview, Chiu uh, Fan, uh, that you will send her to Beijing, I think, in the later in the week. 
Uh, you said that you want her to be a liaison for the Chinese families or the issue around the Chinese families. Uh, my question is twofold. The first one being that shouldn't she be here in Kuala Lumpur given that uh, at least the representatives of the families came over yesterday, not just, uh, I think it was 29, but representatives of them. But secondly, also, I mean, surely, um, I think the government must be very aware of the sensitivities around the families. You saw them on Saturday, the pain that they're in, the very deep pain. Do you think it's going to be enough, though, to have someone who happens to be ethnically Chinese? And will she be able to really move on this and to be able to create um, a game changer where everyone walks away with some resolution in some time? I asked the Indonesian delegation today about the seven Indonesian passengers and their families and whether they faced any problems um, as regards information that is required. And uh, the, the answer given to me was no. Um, there are other nationals also uh, on board that plane uh, whose families are also grieving, including Malaysians. And I met up with them and no. I do not see any major uh, uh, problems. Uh, of course, they wanted me to give an assurance that the SAR continues, and I did. They wanted me to not give up hope, no matter how remote, to look for su survivors. I said, that's always been in my prayers. And uh, they've indicated to me that no matter what it takes, uh, if we're going on to the next phase, when we do, if we do find uh, debris related to the satellite images, um, we will do whatever it takes um, to locate uh, the black box and, and, and the plane, if need be. Those are rational requests. And uh, I, I've engaged them, and the majority of the families have been very uh, reasonable. Uh, as regards to those who may feel otherwise, um, it's a work in progress. We continue to engage them. And the appointment of Chiu Mei Fan uh, earlier uh, specifically to address the families in China is really to um, try and understand with the Chinese authorities um, how and what needs to be done uh, to assist them in this very difficult time. Nobody is denying that it's difficult. It's difficult for all of us. Um, and, it's, and it doesn't apply to only Chinese nationals who have lost loved ones. It applies to 13 other countries. Um, but this extra effort that we have put on uh, with regards to the Chinese families is firstly because of the, um, the number of passengers involving the Chinese families bigger than the rest. And secondly, we need to engage and uh, inform a huge population of Chinese that may uh, listen to speculation and make wrong, different assumptions uh, about what's been going on. Uh, we have been very consistent and we're moving on to the next phase. Uh, and you, James, and CCTV is fully aware how committed I am to engaging them. Yes, please. Hi. Uh, that's right. Uh, could you confirm with me, uh, uh, what were the last words uh, spoken uh, well, hello, hello, hello. I mean, there's new revelation of some other words came up. And, and uh, who spoke that? And the second question, sir, is uh, uh, the reports that the FBI have uh, cleared pilot Nahari uh, of anything uh, based on the findings from the flight simulator. Can you confirm that it's clear? Uh, I was told that that statement uh, came out from the FBI themselves. Uh, I'm not quite sure about that report. But I can confirm my own personal uh, involvement uh, with the investigations that relate to FBI uh, was from day one. And any indication, uh, uh, yes or no, or otherwise, coming from the FBI, you have to take it as FBI's face value. On our part, I would like to go through the process of the uh, inquiry. And like I said, uh, we cannot stray from the focus of finding the airplane because a lot of these answers can be answered if we find the black box. And time is running out as far as signals coming out from the black box, if it is indeed uh, in the um, Indian Ocean. The first question is an indirect way of asking for the transcript. 
And uh, like I said again, it's part of uh, the investigation. And you smile and I've obviously touched uh, the right point. Um, if it's so important, let's, let me talk to the uh, experts and investigators. And if it can be rebuilt, it will be rebuilt. I don't think it's going to show anything sinister. Okay, last question for once. Second room. Yes. Uh, over here. Um, room, please. Melissa. Could you st stand up, please, Melissa? Thank you. Uh, just two questions. The reason why in Asia there are not so many salties, I said, uh, 94, is it because the search area has been moved up again? As the search no, no. It's just that to get through to where the search areas are, they have to go through Indonesian airspace. The point that I mentioned about the number of sorties is the cooperation and, and, and the coordination that is required is unprecedented. So, Australia is still leading the search, right? Yes. Uh, as you know, we have divided the areas of search into quadrants. And so it happened that the lead that we have right now uh, is in the quadrant in which Australia is responsible too. And they've uh, been very cooperative, very committed. Um, and and I, I really would like to take this opportunity to not only thank them, but to, make, to request that they continue uh, against uh, a lot of ch challenges, weather um, and distance. Um, but I, I, I see that uh, every day um, they have not uh, let any of us down, especially the families. So lastly, will there be no PC while you're away? Because you're leaving tomorrow, right? Mm, I can have a PC when I'm away. Yeah, the world is so borderless right now. Hi. No, I cannot be. Thank you. We've got to follow, we got to follow SOPs. That was the last question. Thank you very much. The next species will please look at the notice board that we have in the media center and it is stated there when and where. Thank you very Any much. Any press release will be noted there also. Thank you very much. That concludes the session for today. Baik, uh, berakhir sesi sidang media untuk hari ke-24 Operasi Mencari dan Menyelamat MH370. Baik, apa yang boleh saya uh, kongsikan uh, setakat ini uh, daripada sidang media yang berlangsung sebentar tadi, uh, Perdana Menteri Datuk Seri Najib Tun Razak akan uh, membuat lawatan kerja ke Pengkalan Tentera Udara di Raja Pierce di Perth, Australia bermula Rabu ini bagi meninjau Operasi Mencari dan Menyelamat uh, yang berpusat di sana. Dan uh, selain pada itu juga, um, Datuk Datuk Sinajit juga akan menyampaikan penghargaan dan juga uh, terima kasih daripada kerajaan kepada anggota misi uh, mencari dan menyelamat termasuklah daripada Malaysia. Dan uh, selain daripada itu, uh, menjawab soalan daripada media sebentar tadi, uh, Ahmad Jauh Riyaya, Ketua Pegawai Eksekutif um, MAS memberitahu mengenai uh, uh, tindakan undang-undang yang uh, sebelum ini dilaporkan akan diambil oleh uh, keluarga pihak keluarga daripada uh, China. Walau bagaimanapun uh, menurut uh, Ahmad Jauh Riyaya sebentar tadi, Uh, bel mereka belum lagi menerima sebarang notis daripada uh, keluarga penumpang MH370 dan uh, tindakan hanya akan diambil oleh syarikat itu selepas mengetahui uh, bentuk tuntutan yang dimahukan oleh ahli keluarga ini. Baik itu antara ringkasan daripada sidang media yang berlangsung sebentar tadi. Uh, walau apa sekalipun, uh, teruskan bersama dengan kami di TV1 kerana perkembangan yang akan kami bawa dari masa ke semasa. Untuk itu, kembali semula bersama Hisham dan juga Lela.